The Mirror Woods is a bike that actually has an interesting history within the Marin lineup. Back then, it was framed as the ultimate ATB capable for downtown as well as going up hills. Fast forward to today, has that changed? Does it still have that all-rounder DNA? In this video, I'm going to review the current Marin Muir Woods, a bike that wasn't really on my radar until a bunch of you guys suggested it. The Muir Woods, what is it? Currently, it sits in the urban kind of transportation line within the Marin family. The frame is steel as well as the bladed fork and both have all the eyelets you could ask for. You could definitely run racks and fenders on this bike. So in that sense, it has all the livery of a urban machine. The frame is quick release, so in some ways that hasn't changed from the original Mirwoods. It is, however, disc brakes and it has a slightly sloping top tube, which makes it easier in terms of standover height. For the stoppers, you've got Tektro hydraulic disc brakes and the drivetrain is a pretty interesting mix that, that kind of takes after my own heart of hacking together drivetrains. Crank is a 38 tooth non-branded crank set and it's hard to say if you can replace the chain rings with these cranks. It is one by and the shifter and rear derailleur are MicroShift Advent X, but the rear cassette is a pretty wide range 11 to 51 Sunrace cassette in 10 speeds. So out of the box, the bike actually has a decent amount of range. So what makes this bike interesting? Futurist here. Uh, do you know that in the seven years I've been doing the YouTube channel and over the hundred bikes I've reviewed, I have not been paid for a single bike review. It's just something that I don't do. It's something that I believe very strongly about. The Marin was sent to the channel free of charge, but when I'm done with it, I have to ship it back or get it back to the distributor. And I do this because I understand that the reputation and the credibility of the channel is far more important than, you know, what a couple hundred bucks from a, a bike brand. I think that's important in the long term. And if you guys think that's important as well, and if you want to support the channel, please join us on Patreon or buy some stickers. That is literally how we keep this channel going. AdSense doesn't really pay the bills. And since we hardly do any sponsorship on the channel, your direct support is what keeps this channel going. Let's go back to the review. For a bike that's ostensibly an urban and commuter bike, it has more progressive mountain bike geometry. I guess in that way, it stays true to its OG mountain bike heritage. The head tube angle is pretty slack at 67.5 and the resultant trail is intentionally high at 98 millimeters, especially with those 700 by 40 millimeter tires. This is different from your typical commuting bikes, which tend to have more roadish head tube angles in the 70s and the trail numbers are usually in the 60s and 70s. On the rear of the bike, the bike is actually relatively short at 430. And that's despite the fact of having some massive tire clearance. Although the bike comes stock with 700 by 40s, you could probably easily put a 2.3, if not larger, both in the fork and in the rear. Actually, the bike actually looks a little anemic with 40 millimeter tires. It's definitely begging for some bigger meats. So I threw a bunch of numbers at you. How does this bike actually ride? And I have to say, pretty interesting. For me, I'm used to more roadish style bikes. So it took a couple rides to get used to this more progressive mountain bike geometry, especially on the road. Because of the slack head tube angle and the higher trail, the bike does have a tendency to flop at slower speeds. That's just a function of the geometry. Let's say it's neither good nor bad, it just is. I, I feel like it also takes a little bit more body English to navigate around corners. Where it excels, however, is at higher speeds. And you don't have to be going like 20 miles per hour, just basically anything above 10 miles per hour. Because of that higher trail, once you hit a certain speed, the front has a tendency to be more stable and self-centered. The closest analogy I can think of is imagine pushing a shopping cart. When you're going slow, it sort of wiggles all over the place. But once you get it going, it actually takes more effort to redirect the front end once it gets that momentum. These handling characteristics are really great on high speed descents, both on pavement and rocky terrain. The bike just feels super stable and planted at speed. The counterpoint to that, of course, is the tendency for wheel flop, in particular at slow speeds and with a load in the front. You just feel like you have to micromanage the front end a little bit more if you're going on like a slow speed climb 
or even if you're just like walking with the bike, the, the front end just wants to flop all over the place. The rear of the bike felt relatively responsive. It wasn't road bike quick, but it didn't feel like a slouch either. For me, I think it accelerated well enough for urban riding situations. All in all, I think it's what you would expect when you put a bike with kind of progressive mountain bike uh, geometry with some slicks and unleash it on the urban streets. What didn't I like about the bike? Uh, like I said, the range was actually pretty decent. Although for me, I think it would definitely benefit from a smaller chain ring, especially if you're gonna take it climbing in the mountains with a load. The 38 tooth is much better than the stock 40 that you'll see on many bikes. But even with this bike, I think it could benefit with some lower gearing. And that's where the first kind of gotcha moment is. Uh, I can't really tell if you can swap out the chain ring or if it's going to require a brand new crank set. I didn't take the crank off because I didn't have tools, uh, but here are some shots of the back. Let me know if you think this is replaceable. Another thing in terms of the gearing, I do love the range of that big wide range uh, Sunrace cassette but I felt like the middle gearing was pretty gappy. There's a pretty noticeable jump from 18 to 23 tooth in the middle. And of all the places to have a huge uh, jump in the cassette, this, this part was not the place to do it. I found, I found it really difficult to find just like a nice cruising speed for the city. I was either pedaling too hard or spinning uh, too fast. I think that maybe would have made more sense to put that big jump near the low end of the cassette and have it as like a bailout gear. You could, you could potentially fine tune that middle range of the cassette by changing uh, the chain ring. But again, there's a question of whether or not you can actually swap out the chain ring on the bike. Other things I didn't like about the bike, um, tend to be more personal preferences. So I prefer a bike with more of a swept back. Also the 40 millimeter tires, you know, after riding 650B by 48s for the past, I don't know, five years, just felt a little stiff to me. Interestingly, they used to offer the Muirwoods in a RC version, specifically had all these changes. So more of a swept back bar and came stock with 650B by 48 millimeter tires. Probably my most significant criticism of the bike uh, is the weight. I mean, the bike looks like it should be fairly svelte, but it weighed in on our scales at uh, at a hair over 30 pounds for the size medium. And I have no idea where this weight is coming from because it looks like it should weigh a lot less, but there you go. I also don't think the wheels are tubeless compatible. So usually that's a quick and easy way to drop some weight and also add some better flat protection, but you're gonna need a new wheel set. Tires, in my opinion, aren't particularly supple, neither is the fork. Uh, it feels it feels pretty rigid. The bike generally feels a little bit on the stiff side, and it's just begging for some bigger tires, and you know, as you can tell, it has tons of clearance for it. All those negatives aside, one big positive is the price. You know, the bike comes in at under $900, uh, depending where you buy it. For that money, I think you get an authentically interesting bike geometry wise and spec wise without breaking the bank. It's not the perfect bike by any means uh, for the money, but it really makes an interesting platform, especially if you want to play with a bike or build up an alt bar bike with that more progressive slacker front end. Let's do a quick comparison with the Hudski because this is where the Muir Woods got suggested initially. A Hudski is double the price and the frame is aluminum and it has a carbon fork. If you put the two bikes on Bike Insights, they are fairly similar from a geometry perspective. When you're, when you're actually riding them, to my mind, the Hudski generally felt a little bit more responsive. And I think this is because it was five or six pounds uh, lighter. The biggest downside with the Hudski, uh, in my opinion, is that it does tend to be a little slap happy with that very low bottom bracket. Is the Muir Woods identical to the Hudski? Are you getting the Hudski for nearly half the price if you buy the Muir Woods? No. I mean, you're kind of in the general ballpark. You're playing a similar sport, but to say it's one-to-one, -one, it is not. Overall, I think Marin brings lots of interesting bikes to the market without breaking the bank, and the Muir Woods is no different. Typically for commuter bikes within this price point, it's kind of the same, same, same geometry. Th this Muir Woods, however, it's, it's different. <laughs> I'd, again, I'd personally swap out the bars, put bigger tires, r really, really supple the bike. I don't know if that's a, a verb now or adjective, or I try to track down the RC version of the Muir Woods, which is kind of closer to how I would build one up 
personally. I think it's an interesting bike, even for me, a bike nerd who's had the opportunity to ride way more expensive bikes. I think it's, it's still kind of charming and cool. And it's definitely built like a tank. So if you're looking for an interesting, you know, bomb proof uh, commuter bike, which you could also use a platform for some really interesting alt bike builds, then check out the Mirror Woods. And hey, if you enjoy these reviews, learn something new and want to support the channel, definitely join us on Patreon. That's the best way to do it. You know, we often, oftentimes we don't make money on these videos. Actually, we lose money and, and it's through your direct support via Patreon or buying some merch that we're able to keep this, keep the dream alive, keep riding and keep the supple side down.